Hi, today I'm going to show you how I am going to use this new Stampendous Holiday Hugs. Uh, this is a Snowman Hugs edition, and I just put it on a magnetic mat just so I don't lose the pieces while I am making my project. So to start with, I took an old set of Spellbinders Nestabilities, and these are standard circles called large. And there's seven different circles in here. I use the two largest ones. And with washi tape, I tape them together because I wanted to make these small frames to put my snowman in. I cut it four times out of craft cardstock, and I'm just going to glue them together and I'll leave one aside and I'll show you why in a minute. So I glued the three frames together. I saved one and then I took apart the two um, nested circles, taking off the smaller one and using the larger one. I had this left over from a card and I didn't use it and it's um, a piece of vellum that I embossed with a 3D embossing folder. And then I uh, ran a white pigment ink pad over the top just to highlight the white, but I didn't like it because it warped a bit. So I'm gonna see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna cut it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna use a larger circle to cut it out so that it fits inside this frame. And I'll be right back. Um, in case anybody wants to know, this embossing folder was one of the Spellbinders embossing folders of the month. It's a 3D subscription. I'm not sure if it's available. I'll link it below if it is. Otherwise, you can use any snowflake or even a plain piece of vellum would look pretty. It would just be white, see-through, and I think that would look nice anyway. So I cut the larger snowman from a piece of fun foam, and I was imagining that I would put him like this and then put some pieces around him and it would look, you could either use this as an ornament or just a topper for a gift or um, on the front of a card, whichever one you decide to do. Um, and you can even cut the circle larger if you want it to fit more inside or there is a smaller baby snowman which you could put inside this as well and then build a scene around him. So I'm taking the three piece layered circle and I'm taking some Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and the darker ground espresso. And I, I've done this a bunch of times where I want something to look like wood. So I take these small cubes and just kind of run it back and forth, creating some streaks. You wanna do it all in one direction you can see it starts to look like wood. So it really works great on a larger piece. And this would just be the way the grains, the grain of wood would look, just kind of going back and forth. And you could kind of drag it this way and that way. Um, but just up and down the way that I'm doing it, or you would do it horizontally but just keep going in the same direction. You don't want to go this way and then this way because that's not the way the wood would look. So lightly, I would just go back with a little bit darker color and then kind of, if you just drag it a little bit, you'll see that it looks like wood. And this is, I wanted this to kind of look like one of those wooden ornaments. And if you do it a little bit lighter in spots and then darker, and then I'll just rub it all the way around just to give it a little bit more dimension. And that is that, that's pretty 
easy thing to do. I think the cubes make it easier. They're small and they're easier to move around the paper. So I'm going to let that dry. And meanwhile, I'm going to adhere this piece of vellum to the extra piece. If I had thought about it originally, I, I probably should have cut two of these just to make it a little sturdier because my cardstock is only 65 pounds. It's pretty lightweight. So I'm just putting a small bead of this uh, Artiste glue, which is from scrapbook.com. So I die cut a bunch of pieces and to save time, I didn't do that on the screen. I just think it's a waste because I'm sure you know how to die cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing the pieces together. Um, I used a scrap piece of this black sparkly paper. And I hope you don't ask me where it's from because this is a scrap that I had in my scrap heap. I just, say so many small pieces because I know that I'm going to want to use them and something like this glitter paper was probably fairly expensive and uh, I knew that I could cut something from it someday and it came in handy. So the sparkly paper I think it has yeah it has some adhesive but I'm not going to use that it's just I do remember one thing about this paper it was very flimsy and trying to get that back off um, the backing off was really hard. So, I'll show you something else I do too. Just take one of the pieces out of my garbage of cardstock. And so, this is just a fairly heavy piece of cardstock, and I just like to even out the glue. The times that I don't use my fingers, then you end up getting glue everywhere. So, the other thing that comes in handy are these tweezers to keep your fingers from getting very gluey. I'm just attaching it to a piece of black, regular black cardstock that was, I think it was 60, no, it was, it was heavier than 65. It must've been about a hundred pound cardstock. And that again was a little scrap that I had of black. Let's see, let's see, here it is, that I had saved, knowing that I'd be able to back it with something. So, I'm going to have this little hat on my snowman and I did want to back it just because some of it is, is going to be hanging off. I'm going to have to also put a small piece of foam here because the snowman is foam um, to keep the hat from bending. So you'll see it won't lay completely on there. So I'll probably have to put just a tiny, tiny even a piece of cardstock back here just to keep it level. Yeah, I think I'm gonna to have to do that. But you kind of see how it's coming together.
Next, I'm gonna put together the scarf. It comes in two pieces like this. And it goes close to his face to make it look a little cozy. Um, you just have to slide the pieces together. This usually takes me a second to remember how it slides together, but I must be getting good at this because I do remember that it kind of frames his face like this. A little bit higher. These are adjustable. And there's some lines. Okay, so that's good. Don't want to take that apart because I don't want to have to remember how to put it together. Just sticking a little bit of glue to keep those spots in place. So while the snowman is drying, I, um, I'm going to make the sentiment. I'm using the Stampendous Holiday Hug Sentiments. It has all these different sentiments, warm wishes, Merry Christmas, and then a few that look like an envelope, um, like a, a postal mark. Uh, it looks like a letter, Dear Santa, I can explain. And then um, some sentiments you could use for tags if you want to do that, too, from... Uh, this is a corner of an envelope, like a airmail envelope. I don't know if people still use those, but I remember those. Or you could just use a little frame decoration. So I'm going to use warm wishes just because I think it's a little bit more generic um, than a holiday card. You could use this any time in the winter. Uh, I'm going to use the hugs accessories, which I use for some birthday cards. Um a few months ago. If you want to see those, they're on my Instagram. I have a couple here that I can show. The cat and the dog, and it came with some of these cute little accessories. The mouse, the hat, and then here's a sentiment, happy birthday. Same with this, you did it. And then the dog, I believe, came with, you know, some of these sports type um, die cuts and so I just put a little baseball cap on the dog I did a few other ones these are the two that I have left so using this hugs accessories it has yeah it has a banner a banner like this and it also comes with these little uh, gifts and you can use little envelopes to have the bears hold or the snowman hold the envelope or presents I use it for some other cards I made. Here's a tag. I used Happy Holiday Hugs on that one. So this is a slimline card that I made using the snowman and the extra little snowman. And then the pieces that look like little gifts. I cut out of some stampendous paper. Because um, I had this pretty pattern on it and the bows had the pattern on it. And here you could see the candy cane. And then there were extra pieces of these little cuffs that make it look like your snowman has mittens on. You just cut uh, a piece, another piece of his hand. So rather than a mitten die, you would just cut a small piece, take a small piece of paper, put it over that die, and then you glue that on and put the cuff on top. And it looks like a mitten. So that's that. I think that's everything on this card. This was a cute card too. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment. Just use a little memento ink, ink it up. Tuxedo black. I think it's a pretty basic color. A lot of people use this ink just for regular stamping. It's nice and clear. You can see I, I did it two times and that's good. And then I'm going to take the die and kind of figure out where I want it placed. So luckily it did work out great. But what I was saying before is you could die cut the banner first. A lot of people do this. Do it first. Line this up. 
you line up your stamp where you want to fit it. Then you put this back in, and this wouldn't have the um, sentiment on there yet, but then you line it back up and then you can go ahead and stamp it. Makes a lot easier if you're going to make a bunch of cards too, using the same sentiment and the same um, die cut, because you could just cut a couple of them, put them in there, stamp it, die cut another one and another piece of paper. If you wanted to change colors even, you can do that. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, but luckily when I lined this up, I kind of looked to see where that hole was and I wanted that in the middle and I lined up my paper that way. Okay, so I did want to show you one other thing that I did. Um, the snowman had cut out the eyes and rather than placing them back in with a, another piece of paper, and since I wasn't going to see the back, I took this scrap piece of black, cut a tiny piece off, placed it, whoops, placed it in the back here and just glued it on. I didn't even die cut the eyes. And that way when you look at it from the front, you can see a little bit of black. You can't see the sparkle. It doesn't really matter. You can use any color you want. But I just thought that was a good way of highlighting the eyes. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're going to see through them. And I did like that. Um, I did that for the other cards I made. Um, I glued the snowman onto um, some fun foam to pop him up. And I just took a black thin marker and I colored in his eyes. Because otherwise they look white. The little snowman um, has a stamped face, and that comes from the Snowman Hugs Faces and Sentiment Stampenda set. And there's a couple of faces. You could even stamp the larger snowman's face if you want as well. And then it has all these cute sentiments for cards. Consider yourself hugged, happy holiday, with hugs, whatever. And then you can make your snowman look like they're hugging, which is what I did here. So there's lots of different options, what you can do with this. And anyway, so back to this. Um, you can see I have my banner cut. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and put the snowman on because if uh, I just want to be sure he's going to stick on here and I don't have to worry about pressing onto that banner and maybe damaging it. And I'll put the banner on last like that. So let's see. I know that I want the wood grain to go horizontally. So he's going to have to be lined up like this. I'm going to place just a little piece of black cardstock right here by the leaves just to make it stick up a little bit nicer in case, you know, you mail it or whatever, you don't want that to kind of bend in. So I decided that it looked a little lonely on the banner because the uh, sentiment was so small. I felt like it needed something. So I had, of course, the leftover glitter foam that I used for the snowman. And I just cut two small pieces. And luckily, it's an adhesive back. And I didn't even realize that or remember that. We're not going to use that with tweezers because it'll just stick. Just try to figure out probably want it somewhere like that. You know, that way I can hold on to his hand as well. So, a little sticky. I don't know if I use, need my tweezers to pull this off. I don't usually use adhesive backed products. I, I just, I don't even remember where I got this foam, to be honest with you. Um, 
it was left over and it looks like I used it to cut a larger snowflake. So again, just placing that one here. You can use any snowflake die. I use this little one and it came from um, the Spellbinders BB's snowflake line and I had the pop-up snowflake, but it's just a small snowflake. I have other snowflakes, but that was on my desk because I was using um, the set that would need to dry a little bit more. But you can see how cute that snowman came out and it looks like a, a nice little topper. You know, um, you can make it for a card. I would probably emboss a white panel because it looks kind of plain on there unless you want to make it removable. I've seen that um, where people just take a small piece of string and attach the string so that someone can use this again because this is nice for a gift. Or you can see how pretty it looks. This is just a mistake paper I had, but even on there, look how pretty that looks. And the blue kind of shows through the vellum, which makes it look nice. Or if you wanted to make this into a tag, you could cut another circle and attach it here and open it up and write something inside. I've also used these as a um, gift, let me just get the box, gift, gift box toppers for a present. If you're gonna give somebody a, a small gift or even something larger instead of a bow or a tag, you could use this. And again, you could make this into a tag if you wanted. But I sometimes just like to attach this onto a present on a plain white box and it still looks pretty. I'd probably just cut more snowflakes and kind of put them down. This is just the backing from that um, adhesive back. But here's an extra snowflake I had. You could just put a couple around here and uh, that would be pretty too. You could use this for a hostess gift or cookies or something. Just put that on top. It's just very pretty. So that's it. That's how you made that uh, cute little wood, faux wood ornament. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you liked it. You could give me a thumbs up or a comment. I'm also on Instagram at Susan B. Cards. And I will link to my blog and the products I use.